What is good, YouTube, man? Today I got us a good video explaining what's up with Gus Bradley's system. Be explaining the rules about it, why it's good, why it's good against the run, why it's good against the pass, what are its flaws. So, um, let's get right into it, man. So, let's first start off with the personnel of the of the 4-3 under Gus Bradley cover three scheme. Um, straight up, there's two big holes that we need to fill in order for this defense to flourish under Gus Bradley. And uh, simply, it's the defensive tackle position and the deep safety. That's it. Um, now, let's talk about the personnel real quick. So, as it stands today, if the season were to start tomorrow, our 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 system would look like this, basically, as far as player-wise. Um, Gus Bradley, he runs a 3-4 a with five. It looks like five down on the line of scrimmage, but it's really four down linemen and a linebacker. So um, starting off on the defensive line, defensive front, who's on the line of scrimmage, on the left side, starting, we would have Crosby. In the middle, we would have Hurst. The other middle, defensive tackle, that's a hole that we need to fill with a free agent or a trade pickup for a pass rushing defensive tackle there. That's one of the holes. Then you fill that need, going to the right end, we got Cleveland Furrow. Next to Cleveland Furrow, it's not a five down lineman set. It's just five guys on the line of scrimmage. You would have Corey Littleton. Corey Littleton right next to Klee on that, on that line of scrimmage. Um... That's what the 4-3 under means because in the other Tampa 2 that um, Rod, Marinelli, Rod Marinelli likes to run at the end of the system was just four on the line of scrimmage, three linebackers back, two two high safeties, and two outside safeties. And um, that's the difference between these 4-3 covers, 3 scheme under, 4-3 under scheme. So you're going to have Corey Littleton on the, on the line of scrimmage with those four defense linemen. Then you go to the next level, the front seven, the backers. Um, your backers now become Nick Wachowski, Jonathan Abram comes down, and Nicholas Morrow. The reason why Jonathan Abram comes down is because in this system, you do not have two deep safeties. You have one deep safety that can really cover the middle, and that makes Abram's role easier. He just comes down, and I said this before. We've seen Abram make huge hits, huge plays from deep, from the deep high position by himself, 18 yards back. He's going to be 10 yards closer to the play with this new system. This is going to allow him to make even more plays, let him react quicker, and let him get to the ball carrier quicker. So the three, the three linebackers that would be there is Nick, Nick Kwiatkowski, Abram, and Morrow. Um, uh, Abram would play in the middle, and so Nick. Um, Moro will go down to the flats. I'm going to talk about that later. And then your three deep players, um, as it stands right now, would be Mullen, uh, a deep high safety that would be coming in from free agency, and either Arnett or, oh, I know we've been linked to Sherman, so we could say Sherman. He would also play that deep high. Like He wouldn't play um, a safety role. They would just play their corners, but they would go deep back with the safety. And the safety is playing the middle. They're playing the outside thirds. So um, let's start off with the rules. So obviously the four linemen, the 4D linemen, they're rush the passer run, and stop the run. You know, Cleveland Furrow is set the edge. Hurst is to plug the A-gap. Um, the other defensive tackle who we don't know yet because we do need to bring somebody in will also cover the A-gap. Then Crosby, his job is to contain, cover the C-gap. Um, then... Let's talk about the, the the zones now. So if it were to be a pass, Corey Littleton is on the line of scrimmage. He drops out to the flats. Um, he's the first flat on the right side. Then you have to go up to your linebackers. Morrow will play the flat onto the left side, so he would have to come down quick, play the flat on the left side. And you have Abram and Kwiatkowski covering the middle. Um, this is why a lot of people uh, think that this is – it's it's a four three under with three four rules like the scheme three four rules because you have two guys in the middle that's being able to cover and that makes it a lot easier for them because instead of one guy trying to cover the entire middle it's split between two 
and that's because you have a lot of faith in your deep high safety that can cover the middle by himself. So with Abram and Kukowski covering the middle, I mean, we know Nick Kukowski can cover great. He's a good coverage linebacker. And Abrams, he's a DB. He's going to be able to cover these guys better than Nick Kukowski can. Um, then you have, like I said, Arnett and Trayvon, or Arnett and Sherman, whoever whoever it is in free agency. You would have the two, two outside corners. They're playing their deep thirds. Then you would have your your deep free safety he's just playing the deep middle um the reason why this is extremely effective you hear other old players um that played in this system before with Gus Bradley this is an extremely effective defensive front to stop the run um let's talk about the run first the reason why it's so effective to stop the run is because at all times you have seven men in the box you have seven men in the box. That's seven players that can react to the run that are only seven to ten yards on the line of scrimmage. So it's extremely effective because you're playing, you have a lot of guys in front of the play. There's not it's not like our nickel defense last year where we had two deep high safeties playing 15 to 18 yards outside of the play. Then we never were impressed last year for some reason. We always had our corners back. So those were four guys already taken out to play. Um, then our linebackers were already, they, we didn't have a fifth guy on the line of scrimmage. All three of our linebackers were off the line of scrimmage. So the reason why this is so good against the run is because you have that fifth guy on the line of scrimmage, in this case that's Corey Littleton, that's going to be able to react to the run just as quick as our defensive linemen. Then you have Moro, Abram, and Nick that also are going to react to the run quicker than our, our our three coverage guys. So this is why it's an extremely effective formation towards the run because you have seven men in the box at all times. Also, it's not a nickel formation or a dime formation where you have five or six defensive backs out there. This is mainly bigger guys. You have your strong safety, which in our case is a huge, huge Plus, because our strong safety is a great tackler and a great hitter. So you have you have essentially four linemen, three linebackers, and a strong safety. All those are all guys that can tackle better than corners and our deep coverage safety. So the reason why is that you have secure tacklers because you have linebackers out there. You have secure uh, tacklers because you have your four down linemen, obviously. And you have a strong safety, which is an aggressive safety in our case in stopping the run all of these guys are much better tacklers than if we played a nickel formation where instead of us having so many good secure tacklers we we would have more defensive backs out there more leaner guys more skinnier guys that would struggle tackling more than our other guys like linebackers and defensive linemen so that's why this formation is extremely well it works well against the run because of the simple fact that you have a lot of guys in front of the play at all times, you always have seven guys in front of the play, no matter what. Seven people that, that can react. Um, ah, excuse me, eight people at all times that can react. You have a stacked eight-man box at all times because of Corey Littleton. He's there on the line of scrimmage just like the other uh, defensive linemen. So, yeah, it's an eight-man box at all times. At all times, it's an eight-man box. Um why this is an ex it's also very effective against the pass is it's simple um it has the rules of a 3-4 defense and i say that because in the 3-4 you're essentially you essentially have only three down linemen and um three or four man uh down linemen and the rest are covering so in our situation we don't have just three rushers we're gonna have four rushers but you have the fifth guy on the defense, on the line of scrimmage. And the reason why it's so effective is for the simple fact that you have one guy covering the flat on one side of the field, the other guy covering the flat on the other side of the field, and you have two guys in the middle covering the short to intermediate routes. Then you also have your deep high safety covering the middle. So essentially in this formation, the middle should never be exploited. Um, you have two guys covering the middle 
One of them is your very athletic, strong safety. And the other one in our case, which is very helpful, is our very good coverage linebacker, Nick Krakowski. He's very good at covering, especially in the middle. Um, and then you have your deep high safety that's also covering the middle, anything deep. So let me say that one more time. You have a guy in the flat, would be Corey Littleton on the right side. Your other guy going to the flat is going to be Nicholas Morrow on the left side. You have Jonathan Abram and Nick Kukowski covering the middle together. So it's not one guy that has to cover it by themselves. They split it in between two, and they can cover those the middle effectively together because it's not one guy. It's two players. They can split the middle together and cover more ground. Um, then you have Arnett and Mullen, or Mullen and Sherman, whoever we decide to bring in. Covering that, that sideline, they cover their, their, their respective sideline on each side that they're on. Then you would have your deep safety covering the middle. So this, this really works well when you have athletic and quick, quick and fast players. So the reason why I think that this defense is going to flourish under this is because you look at it. Corey Littleton came from a 3-4 defense where he was either covering the flats or or he was sharing the middle of the field with somebody else. Now, with this new scheme, Corey Littleton is either going to be covering the flats, or for whatever reason, if they want to switch it up, they can have Corey Littleton covering the middle of the field with Abram. But you have Corey Littleton, who will be covering the flats. This is where he came from, from the Rams, where he had his best success. Um, and you need to be quick in this defense. You need to be very quick, because you need to be... You know, there's the there's there's some holes in this defense. So, luckily for us, we also have another very athletic linebacker and Nicholas Morrow, who's also going to be covering the other flat. Then you have your very good coverage guys in the middle. The reason why I'm saying that Abram is a very good coverage guy is because he's not going to be covering deep these receivers like Tyreek Hill, even though he had some success against him, he's not going to be covering those guys like Tyreek Hill. He's going to be down close to the box. He's going to be covering tight ends and running backs. The, this is a zone system, guys. So he's going he's gonna to work very well in this system. He's going to split the middle of the field with either Littleton or Nick, whoever, or Nick Kukowski, whoever they choose to put in the middle to share with him. So you have two very good coverage guys and Nick Kukowski and Abram covering the middle. And where the two holes pop up in this defense is the seams. The seams is the, the, the two creases in between the linebacker and the outside corners. Those are the only parts that can be attacked if your quarterback is very good or if your, um, your outside linebackers just don't get to their spot in time. So... The reason why this can be attacked and exploited pretty simple is because on one side, it will be pretty well shut down because Corey Littleton will, if it's a pass, immediately rush into the flats and Nick Kukowski, the other linebacker, will immediately go into the seam and cover that, that hook zone. He will cover the hook and hopefully your deep safety will read whichever side they go to and he can go and make a play. And that's why I like this defense so much because it allows your players to make plays whether they're not the best or they're very good. It allows them to make plays when we're ever on the field. So thankfully, we do have Corey Littleton and we do have Morrow who are very quick, fast, athletic linebackers. And we will be filling in that deep safety role with um, hopefully a good deep rangy free safety man the three guys i really want us to go after in that in that position is is really either you you go after john johnson if he doesn't get franchise tagged you go after marcus williams because they have no money to sign him the saints have no money at at all to sign him and then you go after malik hooker i don't want us to really target marcus may too much because Marcus May is more of a strong safety, in my opinion, where he would want to play that same role that Abram is going to be playing in this system, uh, more low to the line of scrimmage. And I don't, we don't want Abram back there by himself. We want a, a guy that can really cover. So it's either Malik Hooker, Marcus Williams, or John Johnson. Um, 
that those are the three guys that I really wanted to try and go plug up that middle of the field because then I feel like this defense is solidified as far as the coverage as far as the coverage goes it's solidified as far as the coverage because let's let's play hypotheticals we go out and get Sherman we go out and get John Johnson so let's say your your back end now your deep side looks like Sherman Mullen and John Johnson or it could look like Sherman Mullen and Malik Hooker or Sherman Mullen and Marcus Williams those are the guys that can cover and it's proven then your 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 linebackers whether you move on from Morrow and you go after like a guy like Jeremiah Wusu Cormore in the draft who's also a very good viable pass coverage linebacker um you can go after that unless you trade your first round pick for a a good pass rushing defensive tackle so um the here's the reason why I feel like Gus Bradley's system can really work for us He's a smart guy, man. His track record proves for himself he didn't perform well last year because everybody on that defense was hurt. It's hard to go into a season thinking you have a plan with guys that you're comfortable with, and then they all get hurt. It's tough. Kind of like what happened to our offensive line. It was tough for Josh Jacobs at times, but he still performed. It's harder for a defense to do that because a defense has to play all as one, and an offense, you know, one guy can make the right play. And the offense works. So this, I feel, is great because you look at guys like Corey Littleton, came from a system very similar to this. Nick Kwiatkowski, although he played great in our system last year anyways, in Chicago, he played in a system very similar to this. Abram is going to play better because he's not going to have to cover the deep, uh, deep safety role by himself. He's going to be able to split the middle of the field with Nick Kwiatkowski at the linebacker position, basically. And then you have Morrow or possibly a draft pick. Very good, very quick athletic linebackers who are going to be able to play the flats very effectively. Then you go out and get a deep safety that can really cover, which I don't think that it will be difficult in this free agent safety class. It's very strong. Um, then you kind of go and just pick and choose who you want to be that that second corner on the other opposite side of Mullen. Whether you try and, um, like I explained in my other video, maybe you just try and develop a guy like Isaiah Johnson, who Gus Bradley really loves his rangy, tall, lengthy kind of DBs. You've seen him do it with Sherman. You've seen him do it with Jalen Ramsey, although Jalen Ramsey was also just a very good player at first anyways. You see him do with Sherman, Ramsey, turn those guys into true number one corners. Can he come to the Raiders and do it with, with Isaiah Johnson? You look at his build compared to those two guys that I just said, they're very similar. Could he do it with Arnett? I mean, Arnett's a very good guy too, but um, I think we what might stunt Arnett and a guy like Meek Robertson as well is that we drafted those guys to fit Gunther's scheme. Those are two very aggressive press man kind of guys and this system is a very zone scheme so it's kind of tough in that in that sense but you look at what he did with those other guys and his other teams I think he can do the same with one of our corners if not two because we already know that Mullen's pretty good so this is why I feel like this defense you know can do good it doesn't have we don't have too many holes on this defense to fill it's just a defensive tackle and a safety um, maybe if you think that pass rushers in need, you go out and get that in the mid to late rounds. Um, this defense can really work, man. You, like I said, there's not too many holes that can be hit on this defense. You look at the top quarterbacks in the NFL and you look at Gus Bradley's track record against them. They always struggle the most against this cover three defense. I'm not saying that they struggle, that they do bad against these defense. But the numbers against the top quarterbacks against this defense are always lower than the other guys. So I really like this defense. I think it'll do good. I think Gus Bradley knows what he's doing. He has his team around him that knows what he's doing. We don't have to worry about Gunther anymore. Um, I think our guys are just ready, man. So let me know in the comments, man. Who do you think we could fill up these holes? What do you think about this defense? Do you like it? Did you want somebody else? Um, just let me know, man. Let me know in the comments what else I could do. And um, yeah, man, apart from that, if you can subscribe, that'd be great. And um, yeah, thank you.